Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to the channel, The Modern Creative, where we help you become a better producer. This is a check-in with the M1 compatibility. Some of you are going to buy a new computer. Some of you are wondering the state of plugins and how everything is working. And so I thought I would make this video to give you a quick heads up. This is obviously in addition to some of the other videos that I have made. Looks like IK Multimedia just had an update, but for whatever reason, a couple of plugins are still not working. Specifically, Fame Studio Reverb seems to be out of the mix, and so that is obviously not a great thing. But let me tell you about some of the companies that are done. Everything is flush, clean. Baby Audio just updated all of their plugins. Eventide is on the up and up. Ontara's Auto Tune, all good. Fab Filter, Vox Angle, Devious Machines, Polyverse waves and of course sound toys all in the clear with m1 compatibility the only plugin that is fully m1 compatible for native instruments is contact the rest of the lot seem to be dependent on rosetta so what i'm going to show you today is how to take the plugins that you've already downloaded on separate external hard drives and how to quickly link them so as to not have to go through that laborious process again. Make sure that you subscribe and let's go. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to Native Access. On the left-hand side, we're going to go to the Not Installed tab. From here, we're going to go ahead and find the appropriate plugin. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add the library for ARPS. And so I'll click on the right-hand side, and then I'll click on the location right here then you go through your external hard drives and you locate it it's right there creating that relationship some voodoo magic happens in the background they're probably installing some kind of license file and then when you go into contact you will find everything is right there working the way that it's supposed to so that's essentially it. You don't have to download everything all over again if you're using external drives. If you're going from an old Intel chip to an M1, you don't want to do transfer migration. You don't want to transfer that data. You're going to have to do this independently. You want to do a fresh install. So that would be the only case where you would have to install everything all over again if you want to be all in the box. But in my case, I decided to use a couple of external drives. And so this is how you do it you go to native access not installed you create the link between the plugin itself and your external hard drive and then from there you just create the relationship within contact one of the things that you can do also is manage libraries and you can have certain libraries pop up or not pop up and so that's great for organization as well but if you have any other questions let me know but just a quick update about the M1 in general, I'm about two months in, just about, maybe a month and three weeks. And it seems to be that everything is working pretty well. I have had a couple of hiccups. For example, sometimes I'll create a project alternative and it will be a little muddied up and playback will be questionable. So I'll go back to the original and everything seems to be okay. But besides little minor hiccups like that, it's incredible, astounded about the performance. I can't wait till all of this comes together, like the confluence of the technology and the opportunity comes together. Because once everybody gets their stuff straight and all the plugins are compatible and all the DAWs are in working order, this is gonna be a magical time for music productions. So anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, go ahead and like, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Got a lot more content coming soon. Stay up, stay happy, and I'll catch you on the next one.